Fields, Elizabeth Moore International Center for Coral Reef Research and Restoration, or IC2R3 for short. We call the area where we keep the corals a nursery, and that's what you see behind me. All of these blue tanks we call raceways, and they can hold little pieces of coral as they grow before they're ready to go out onto the reef. Let's take a look. So in here you can see what we call plugs, and that's what the corals are growing on. When the corals get to be about the size of a plug, like a model I have in my hand, that's when they're ready to go back out onto the reef. Or, scientists can use a special technique to take this coral, cut it into smaller pieces, and then those smaller pieces will grow to create new corals. These corals are really important for creating a strong reef that helps protect us from things like storms and flooding, and creates habitat for marine animals. We can grow corals inside too. This is what we call a wet lab, because we have tanks with water inside. Let's take a look at the corals in here. If you look really closely, you might see a kind of glow-in-the-dark effect. That's because of the lights above. Under the water, corals don't grow in tanks like here on land. We actually grow them on what we call a coral tree, and it looks something like this. This is about half size of what you would see if you went into our coral nursery. We have to use boats to help us get the corals from our nurseries, either on land or out in the water, back onto the reef. And this is just one of the ones that we use. Scientists in this area of the lab study how corals will be affected by future oceans. This information helps scientists decide which corals we should be working on in our nurseries. Scientists can change the temperature and the pH of these tanks and see how corals will react in different environments. And to finish up our tour, we're going to see what's going on in the microbiology lab. Just like you and I can get sick, corals get sick too. In the microbiology lab, this is where we study what's causing them to get sick and find ways to make them better. Let's talk to one of our scientists now. Hi, can you tell us your name and what you do here at home? Hi, I'm Chelsea Petrick and I am the Coral Resilience Staff Biologist here at IC2R3. And I work with a team of researchers to study coral health in different water conditions. Wow, that's really cool. What do you mean by coral health? When you talk about coral health, we can look at the coral and judge a lot about it. This model right here is a good example of a healthy coral. It has all of its color across the whole tissue area. But when you talk about a coral that's sick or has disease, it may appear to look differently. It might have some of this white coloration or even a black coloration, yellow coloration, going across the colony. So what do you hope to find with this research? With this research, we're hoping to figure out which corals are able to fight this disease and which corals that might not be able to. Awesome, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for visiting us here at IC2R3. We hope to see you soon.